it's Ben Hassel here and here in this tutorial we're going to have a look at how we create this more animated version of the Ken Burns effect. So essentially what we're working with here is a still image um, and then we're looking at how we can mask this out, create layers and then actually add some effects like blur in the background, also some texture effects with the built-in plugins in Final Cut Pro 10 to create this kind of nice layered Ken Burns effect. So you may be used to the kind of standard Ken Burns effect in Final Cut Pro 10, but this is gonna go into a bit more detail about how we can actually kind of mask out an image and then create this kind of nice animated movement uh, within the image. So let's dive in and have a look at how we create this animated Ken Burns effect in Final Cut Pro 10. So the first thing we'll go ahead and do is just create a brand new timeline. So we're gonna to go to File and New, and we'll create a new project timeline. And we're gonna make this uh, 1080p. Our image is actually a little bit lower resolution than this, but we're not gonna to worry too much about that because when we add the effects and the blur and stuff, um, we want those to be generated in 1080p's. So we'll call this Real Ken Burns Tutorial and click OK. So the first thing we'll need uh, to drag down to the timeline here is our main image. So the source for this image is from Flickr. And basically uh, the website Flickr is kind of an image uh, storage website. And a lot of organizations and archives use Flickr to store and publish some of their public domain um, imagery. So if you go on there, you can see you can kind of find images like this, uh, which has no known copyright restrictions. Um, and basically um, if you have a search on Flickr, um, then you want to look for this option on the top left basically where we have different kind of creative commons licenses but then this option for no known copyright restrictions and if you kind of have a search on here check uh, the organization where you're downloading uh, things from you'll find some really interesting kind of archive images there and also some video there as well that could be useful for for this type of project so that's where i found uh, this image on the state library of new south wales uh, Flickr page so basically you can see they've got a whole bunch of different archive photography and then when you click on these um, you'll see that there's kind of no known copyright so basically this image is in the the public domain um so we're gonna jump back to Final Cut Pro uh, and basically drag this image down. So I'm gonna drag this image down to the timeline and then we're gonna do Shift and Z to kind of get that to fit to the timeline. And before we go any further, I'm just gonna to go to Window Workspaces and I'm gonna reset the default workspace. And it's basically so that we're all seeing the same thing as we start out here. So the image that I have here in the background, I'm just gonna leave this as is, and I'm gonna hold down the Alt key on my keyboard and just duplicate up a version of this. So essentially what I wanna do is separate out these two riders in the foreground uh, from the background, and then we're gonna layer and blend that with the background, um, but because they're separated, we can kind of animate them differently. So we can get this kind of 3D-like effect where we pull the background away from the foreground. So the first effect we're gonna need here is the, the mask effect. So I'm gonna to come to my effects across on the right-hand side. We are gonna to come to our video and audio masks and scroll down and look for the, the masks option down here. Now you may see a different list here. I've got some other plugins installed and stuff, but basically the mask is what we're looking for. And we're looking in particular for the draw mask effect. So I'm gonna drag this onto my clip. And then we basically wanna draw uh, around uh, these two motorcyclists in the foreground. So I'm gonna zoom right in here to 600%. And we can use this little box on the right to kind of maneuver around uh, these two guys. And I'm gonna stretch this window out. So I'm not worried about the timeline for the moment. We're really just worried about uh, kind of where we're drawing around this image. So I'm gonna start somewhere sort of part way down this wheel. Um, we're gonna blur things in here a bit so we don't need to kind of grab right from the top. And we'll just click around here and then just kind of move around. Now you can do this work in Photoshop as well. Uh, and there's certainly advantages to doing that in terms of being able to retouch up uh, the background or kind of remove the foreground image completely. But we are sticking uh, within Final Cut Pro here. Uh, for all the work that we're going to do. So we're just going to kind of click around this quickly and find the outline of this image. And then essentially what we can do once we've outlined these two riders, we can kind of go into much more detail with this or if we kind of spot mistakes when we play it back we can always come back into this mask and kind of refine it a little bit later 
and I'm kind of keeping it simple at the moment, just kind of clicking dot to dot around my shape here. So we'll probably speed a bit of this up and uh, come back once I've gone round the whole of this rider and then we'll join things together at the end and we'll show you how we do that. So then we get to the join in these two wheels. We're just gonna cut across here and we don't need the bottom of this wheel here because it's kind of in the same focus area. So we'll just cut right across the second bike here and start going around this second wheel. So once we reach the end of this uh, kind of second wheel, somewhere around uh, this line uh, on the dirt, I'm gonna zoom back out to 50% so I can see the edge of this. And basically I wanna mask right outside the edge of this entire shape. And we we'll then come up to this kind of puff of dirt behind here and just quickly go around that. So now essentially, We've got that topmost layer masked out. So if I highlight the bottom layer here and disable it by tapping the V key, you can see we've basically got a kind of nice sharpish um, outline of this top layer. There are some things that we could fix in the middle here, but as we'll see when we kind of add the texture and stuff, um, we can get away with quite a lot uh, with this effect with the, the kind of different layers. So I'm gonna turn that background layer back on and I'm gonna blur the background layers. So this is the first kind of effect we'll add to that background layer. So if we select the blur and we'll choose the Gaussian blur and just drop that onto the background and you can see now we can kind of blur these two layers together and we can change the amount. So it'll come somewhere around about here and blur those two. Now we can blend uh, in this top layer. We can actually add a bit of feather to our mask but that's gonna unsharpen some areas of our image. I'm just gonna fit this back to the window. So you can see we can kind of feather uh, around the edge here. So basically we can feather this, um, but I'm gonna leave this at zero for this particular layer. And we'll kind of see why that is uh, in a minute. So now what I wanna do is add a little bit of animation to this topmost layer and kind of increase the size of it a little bit. So I'm gonna to come to my transform tools here and basically increase this layer and what I'm trying to do when I increase this is just increase it and then move it so it hides as much of the, the kind of bikers in the background as possible. So because the color and the tone and everything still matches, we'll actually get away with quite a lot here um, with this movement when we kind of zoom in or zoom out. So I'm gonna add a keyframe at the beginning here. I'm gonna to come to the end of my clip, just drag to the end, and then I'm gonna use the left cursor once just to come to that last frame, and we're gonna zoom in some more and we'll just move this across to kind of and up a little bit to hide those bikers in the background so basically now you can see we've got this kind of animation um, of those two layers and what we can do now is with that animation happening if i duplicate this topmost layer and we'll just check we're kind of happy with that animation so we can speed this up and slow this down a little bit later, but for the overall effect, I'm happy with the animation. If you feel you need to adjust the speed of it, then just make sure um, when you're adjusting keyframes that you toggle between the keyframes so we don't kind of add lots of extra uh, keyframes there uh, to things. So basically, if we zoom out there, we might just zoom in a little bit more. The movement was quite slow and we could just get this into the spot. So now you can see we've got kind of a nice bit of movement there. So you can see now we've got this nice movement between those two layers. So we're gonna do a couple of other things here. So I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Uh, and the reason we duplicate it now is that it's got the same movement as the layer in the background. So these two layers are moving uh, by this exact same amount. But what we can do on this topmost layer is we're gonna to go to our blur. And I'm gonna add a focus blur on here, okay? And we'll just adjust this. So I'm gonna change the width of this. So I'm gonna just increase the, the width and increase the height here. So we're just getting that nice little bit of blur around the edges there. So we'll just kind of tweak this 
until we get it in the right spot. And we're really what we're looking for is that the two riders here in focus, but then we get a little bit of blurring around the edge. So we'll just increase the amount of blur so we can kind of really see how this is looking. Okay, so we've got a bit of nice blur in the foreground and up at the top here, and we'll just modify this a little bit so that we have everything kind of nicely set up there. Okay, so you can see we get that nice movement there. We've got that nice blur there. And now we just want to kind of work a bit more um, on the, the kind of draw mask. So we're going to do a couple of things. We're going to add a bit more feather around here. And I'm going to add a shape mask onto this. And the shape mask will kind of appear further down here. And we're going to invert this. So basically what that's going to do is it's going to allow me to keep these guys in the middle in focus. And then just kind of feather into the background there. So you can see we're getting a bit more feathering between the, the kind of foreground and background. But we're able to kind of really keep those riders in focus. So you can see we're starting to get that nice kind of movement between those different layers. And to accentuate this, I'm going to grab my background layer, turn on my transform properties, and I'm going to increase the size of this at the beginning, add a keyframe, come to the end, let's come back one frame, and then we'll just change the scale of it. So I'm going to come up to my inspector here and we'll change the, the scale back down here. And so now you can kind of see we get this nice kind of movement between those two layers. So what I want to do here now is kind of wrap this all up into a compound clip. So if I select all of these layers and go to File, New and Compound Clip, it's going to wrap those all up and now I can easily kind of increase the size of all of those so they fit into my frame so I kind of lose the strange letterboxing with the overlapping images and stuff in the background so now you can see this is what we're we're starting to get so there's still some little areas of the the kind of wheel the bike and stuff like that to fix and if you kind of really picked apart this image then you'd definitely be able to see uh, some mistakes but uh, you're kind of getting a nice sense of uh, what we've got here uh, with this layers kind of juxtaposed against one another. So if we double click into our compound clip, we can still modify this. I'm going to add a couple extra details here. So we're going to go to our generators up here at the top left. I'm going to scroll down and we're looking into our backgrounds and I'm looking for this drifting background. So basically I'm going to select this and drag it above the the background layer, this first one, and then you'll see some bubbles floating around. We definitely don't want bubbles here. We're going to change this up in the inspector and turn my transform properties off. We're going to change this from bubbles to dust. And so now we'll get some little dust specks in there. So I'm going to increase the number of those just so we can kind of see them. And then if we come to the video options here, we can change the blend mode. So by changing it to something like difference, we're going to get a bit more accentuated uh, the kind of dust that we've kind of overlaid over the top of that. So you can see we've got this kind of dust moving around. And I've added a bit more than maybe I need, um, but that's just so you can kind of see it in the example. But we can always modify that down. So we can modify down the number. We can change down the scale so they're kind of super small. Um, and then we can also kind of change the speed and the randomness of all those sorts of things as well, as well as the, the kind of blur amount. So once that's done, I'm going to hold down the Alt key and just drag another version of that above uh, these layers here. So basically I'll reduce the number of these, I'll change the kind of randomness of them and increase the scale and we'll increase the blur amount as well. So basically we should get kind of a little bit of different movement uh, in the foreground there. Now one thing we can do, we've kind of got the dust moving around there. If we come up to our shape mask here again, we can drag this onto here. 
pulling that shape mask around the riders and then invert that shape mask so now all of that kind of dust will in the foreground will be happening kind of away from the, the kind of main subject of our our piece here so we'll get kind of dust around the edges in the foreground but not in the middle over the top of these two guys so what we'll do now uh, we are going to come back up to our library keep layering things up i've got a nice little map of australia this is uh, some kind of dirt bike race uh, back in the days in Australia. So I'm going to add a Australia map here. And we'll grab our transform tools here. Uh, increase the scale of this a bit. And then rotate it. So we've got kind of map behind there. And then I'm going to come to my layer blend mode. So I'm going to come in here and we'll just add this as multiply so it will multiply with that background layer we'll drop the opacity a bit here and i'm going to come to my color correction and just pull down the saturation of that just a little bit so we get a little bit of that yellow of the map but not too much and actually um, if we wanted to get a little bit of movement in that map as well that might not be a bad thing but i'm going to leave it unanimated uh, for the moment there's already quite a lot going on in this image. So I'm just going to come back here. I want to try and fix this front wheel of the bike so it's a bit sharper. It's right at the edge of my image there. So to get this back in focus we just need to kind of stretch out this mask here and maybe kind of round it off so we're getting that little bit more blur around the right spot so we can just kind of tweak the positioning of this so we get the blur in exactly the right spots. Okay, so we've got that wheel at the front there nice and sharp by tweaking our shape mask. So you can see the layers are starting to get quite complicated here, but basically we have this kind of nice animation, this little bit of kind of dust moving around and stuff like that that's getting this image to animate um, really nicely. So I'm almost happy with what I've got there, except I think I could drop down the opacity of my map just a little bit and my background layer, I might just take off a touch of that blur just so we can kind of see that these images do actually match up in the background so we're getting a nice kind of layered image there so overall I'm really happy with that um, I think there's one thing that I might do here and we'll do this actually in the main clip so we can still add effects obviously in the main clip if we come to our generators here one useful feature um, is these textures, these grunge textures that we can add and other textures. And if we stretch this down to the timeline, at the moment we have this kind of cracked paint um, on this particular layer. But if we come up to the inspector, you can see we've got a whole list of different textures that we can add here and that we can kind of play around with. So if we just go through some of these, I am going to add... texture 8 there and what we're going to do with this layer is I'm going to actually add on the blend mode of overlay and you can see we get this nice kind of cracked effect uh, there so you can see there's a kind of tint options and stuff in there but if we now cycle through these different effects you can see we get this kind of different effects from uh, overlaying it and kind of using the, the blend mode there to get this texture into there. Now, actually that's quite nice, so I'm going to stick with texture 13. And then with this layer, again, I don't want the texture over the bikers, so I'm going to add a shape mask uh, onto this and then come to my shape mask options, invert it. Uh, and then I really just want to kind of fade this out nice and softly so we almost got just a vignette of this uh, texture there. And actually, I'm going to take the, the kind of saturation of that right down. So it's just this kind of black and white. We can also play around with this exposure. And that's going to change uh, the way that kind of texture overlays. So if we have a lighter image, um, it's going to overlay in a slightly different way, kind of give a different vignette to that image. So you can see now we've got these nice 
layers, the matte behind there, all the blurring and stuff, and it's looking quite nice. And I might just drop down the overall opacity of this texture layer, just so it's kind of a nice subtle build up of these different layers. So to kind of recap uh, what we have here, um, we have basically in our compound clip that we made here, our original timeline, and uh, we've got one background image, um, which has a little bit of blur on it. We've animated that. And then these two layers, um, and the key here is that we've added this draw mask uh, onto these layers, which has kind of separated them out from the background. And then we're able to animate them separately um, to that background. So we're getting this nice kind of little bit of movement in there. And then all the other layers in there, just kind of using the blend modes, adding changes, but then also kind of putting those changes back. So dialing down the opacity so that we keep that kind of nice uh, feeling of the image, but don't overwhelm it too much uh, with lots and lots of different layers that really fight against each other. The contrast of these kind of things is always important. So you can see what we have here as the end result. And overall, I'm really happy with that. It's kind of got a nice texture to it, a nice bit of animation that gives this image a little bit more kind of visual interest, um, especially if you're making something like a documentary or working with archive footage, then this kind of technique could be really useful to kind of bring those archive images to life um, using this Ken Burns style effect. So one last thing that I think could work really well with this video um, is some of the M Film Look plugins. And these are a really cool set of LUTs and kind of pre-built color grades uh, that you can use. But you can see if we grab one of these and drag it across to our video, we get this just this nice color effect here. And we can highlight uh, the clip now. And if we kind of have a look, we can see the, the different M Film Look presets that we can shuttle through once we've kind of added it to the timeline. So you can see we get some real nice light effects on there as well. So that will give the composite that little extra bit um, of interest and kind of visual interest as we're kind of playing around with these. And I'm just shuttling through these just to see which one might work the best. So I'm going to stick with this seaside look. We'll close down our M film look panels here and move away from this. Just let it render out. So let's give this a little playback. So you can see we just get a nice kind of little color tint to it. We've got all the movement that we added in there and then some of these extra light effects that you get uh, with the M film look plugin overlaid over the top there. So Overall, I'm super happy with this. Um, if you have any questions about this technique, about all the kind of compositing that we've done here, then please do leave it in the comments below or let me know if you have any other questions about Final Cut Pro 10. And I look forward to seeing you on the next tutorial.